Cool. Good evening. Beautiful day. Um, my name is Dr. Brian Dooley. I'm a chiropractor located in Pickens, so not too far from here. I graduated Clemson in 1994. I went back to chiropractic college up in Spartanburg uh, in 2002, got out in 2005, and so I've been at it ever since. Um, has anybody been to a chiropractor before? Nobody? What have you heard about? Good, bad, or other? Depends on who you talk to. Okay. Yeah. First people who absolutely love it and swear right. by it, and other people that aren't too far from it. Okay. That the same? Yeah. yeah. And we're all, we pre-med, pre-dental, okay. both. Any any other pre's? There we go. That pretty much cover? Okay. So if I was to ask you what is health, what would you tell me it is? Living. Living. Okay. That's being, a start. Being comfortable. Being comfortable. Okay. Well, I say healthy. That's because that's part of the word. What else? <clears throat> you know, if you tell people I'm healthy, what do you tell them? Usually that you're exercise, you eat well. Okay. Um, you don't smoke. Okay. Good. Feeling good? Yeah. Does that count? Mm-hmm. Health is actually, it is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So just because you feel good doesn't necessarily mean you're healthy. That definition comes from the World Health Organization, which is the health army of the United Nations. Is that somebody? Hey there. Sorry, I just got out of the lab. That's, That's all right. Did you own your lab? I did. Good. My name is Brian Dooley. I'm a chiropractor. Have you ever been to a chiropractor before? I haven't. Okay. Have you heard good, bad, or other anything? Good. Good. That's a good answer. <laughs> um, what does it mean to be healthy? Um, I guess just taking care of yourself and making sure you're mentally physically healthy. Okay. okay. Pretty close. Uh, we were just going over it. Um, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So just because we feel good doesn't necessarily mean we're healthy. Um, a good example, do you guys know who Pete Maravich is? Pistol Pete. Actually went to Daniel High School when he was in ninth grade, I believe. Um, but he was a basketball player, played for a lot of years, and when he retired, he was playing a pickup basketball game, dropped dead of a heart attack. Um, Florence Griffith Joyner, you know about her? Is she the track runner? She's a gold medalist, I believe, in 1988. Okay. And then, you know, so highly healthy, does a lot of exercise, is feeling pretty good, and then she had something go on, and she, pretty as it sounds, she threw up at night and choked on her own vomit and just had no signs of anything going on. Um, a real old one, which is kind of funny, is not really, but uh, Jim Fix is a guy called The Run Doctor, and he wrote a book about jogging and how to stay healthy. Had a massive heart attack while he was jogging. I don't know if he didn't read his own book, but but the point was, you know, that he were exercising, they were eating right, they felt pretty good, but there was something that wasn't going on. Um, another classic symptom, do you know what the first sign of, of heart disease typically is? What would you say? Shortness of breath. Okay. Shortness of breath, what else leading to something? Yeah, leading to heart disease. Okay. <laughs> heart attack. Most people, if you knew somebody, was, if I'm going to have a heart attack tomorrow, I'm going to do something about it. You don't know that it's coming on, and then it hits you. Shortness of breath, pain down the left arm, chest pains, um, those types of things. So what, what does health look like? Some of the things that you talked about, I eat right, I exercise, you know, I'm basically taking care of my body. But the other side of it is, that can also be a, an expression of health. Health is, health is not just a noun. Per se, it's also an expression. You know, when, when you have somebody exercising and working out, well, they're expressing the health of their body. But that person's expressing health, and that person's expressing health, and that person's expressing health. If you ate a bad piece of fish, um, anybody have food poisoning before? How pleasant was that? <laughs> that was great, wasn't it? Want to do it again? But if you ate something that was bad, so you had poisoning, right? So you had a toxin that was in your body, and what did your body do to get rid of it? There you go. Yep. And so is it a good idea that you're throwing up a lot if you have that poison inside your body? Yes. Pretty good idea. 
doesn't feel good. It feels quite lousy, actually. But that's the thing. Your body's so concerned to get that out of your body, that's an expression of your health. That's your body doing what it's supposed to do at that particular time. Does that make sense? Anybody go camping? You ever find water in the creek, and what do you do with the water? And why do you boil it? Get rid of all the toxins. Is there something in our body that boils the toxins away? When you have fever? Fever. And so, you know, we have the germs, and so now the, the heat gets ratcheted up in our body because germs don't like the little changes in degrees, so then the heat the fever goes up. But we have a habit of wanting to lower the fever. Is that necessarily a good idea? The fever is your body's defense mechanism. That being said, you want to be careful with it, you want to watch it. Uh, but a low-grade fever is perfectly normal as far as doing what it's supposed to do to keep your body healthy. Much like throwing up because you eat a bad piece of fish, the body's defense is going to go up with the fever trying to um, cook the germs that are in you. And then you're going to be back to hopefully up there. Does that make sense? Chiropractically, what we deal with is the nervous system. And the nervous system is the master control system of your body. When, when do they say that you're dead? What's the common term? Okay. Brain dead. Right? If your heart's not beating, you can still be alive, right? But if the brain's cut off from the rest of the body, that's when they tell you that you're dead. And so we all have a brain and a nervous system, but the difference between us and a cadaver is life, nerve energy that's going on in our body. So it's the brain sending the message down to the lungs, to the kidneys, to the pancreas, to your little toe, to every cell of your body. And that's what makes us alive, is, our, is the flow of our nerve energy. Make sense? And if, if something comes up that that's, you got a question about, just shoot your hand up. So the chiropractic world of health, the big fancy word that we deal with is something called the vertebral subluxation. And I look at you, here's the nerve coming out of the spine. Can you see the difference between that one and that one? What does that one look like? Which is that? Atrophy. Atrophy is a good word. Restricted, that's a good word. And so it's kind of like putting pressure on a garden hose. You put pressure on a garden hose, right, you're going to get less water flowing through it. You have pressure on a nerve, you're going to get less nerve energy going through it. So the end of that nerve, is that body part going to work better or worse? Right. And it's kind of like turning down a dimmer switch. So you, there's still something going on, because if it wasn't working at all, in, in case of paralysis, then it wouldn't work. But you could have something going on to where instead of working at 100%, you're working at maybe 60%. So would you rather be 60% or 100%? 100? So a lack of proper uh, nerve function, that's going to lead, if it's worth looking worse, you're not going to perform as better, and therefore your expression of health is not going to be as good as it could be. Does that make sense? What is a subluxation? Subluxation has four parts. There's a misalignment of the vertebra between the one above or below it, and it can be any one of the segments of the 24 bones of the spine. It includes a foramen. Um, we know what a foramen is. And so, so now you have the hole where the nerve comes out, and now it's either going to get shorter or it's coming one side or the other, which is what's putting pressure on that nerve. Puts a pressure on the nerve, and that interferes with the mental or your nerve impulse, whatever's coming from the brain or going back up to the brain, so that the brain can run everything. Um, again, think about just stepping on a guard hose. So not as much of a message is getting through, or another way to think about it, would be who's ever had a lousy cell phone call where you didn't quite hear what was going on on the other end. Same thing goes on. The body and the brain aren't communicating as well as possible, and therefore the body is not going to run as well as it can. Make sense? The definition of chiropractic, we call it LACVS. We want to locate the subluxation. We want to analyze it. So we say, well, here's a part of interference in the body. Does the bone move left? Does it move right? Does it tilt up or down on one side or the other? Does it move forward? Does it move back? Is it fused together? Uh, those types of things you would find out. Um, then we want to correct it with the quick chiropractic adjustment. It's just a quick little thrust and the vertebral subluxation. Um, and that, that's, that's it. So we locate the subluxation, we analyze it, see which one, how we want to adjust it, then we put in the thrust, and then we let the body do its thing. Inborn, innate intelligence of the body. Um, so you got Michael Phelps, he's a good swimmer. But if you look at human beings, do they all basically look the same? Eyes in the same spot, nose in the same spot, ears in the same spot, that type of thing. So for the most part, so would you say, what's the odd, is it random or might there be an intelligence behind the whole thing? 
intelligence. Okay. And so, so where do we come from? We come from sperm and an egg, right? So that sperm and an egg then divides and subdivides and subdivides, and all of a sudden we've got the trillions of cells that make the human body. If, if there wasn't an intelligence behind it guiding that process, you know, we'd all look all sorts of different, you would think. Um, but there is an intelligence behind it, and there's that process, is every process that's going on in your body. When you had dinner this evening, if you did have dinner this evening, or you had lunch, your body, you know, you don't think about, well, right now I've got to take out the good stuff, I've got to get rid of the bad stuff, and, and, you know, this is where this nutrient goes, and this is where that's got to go. Your body just does it. It knows what to do with, with the ham sandwich and take care of it. Um, your body knows when you're exercising that you need more blood and you need more air, so your heart pumps, uh, pumps more, your lungs, you're going to breathe heavier, those types of things. Uh, when you cut yourself, you know, if, if you've cut yourself, even if you had stitches, did the stitches heal the cut? Right, what heals the cut? Platelets. Right, platelets. Your body does. You do it. And so he sends the platelets down there, the red blood cells, all that stuff, and we fix the cut. The stitches are good because it's going to heal nicely, and we want that. A little bit of chiropractic history. It was founded in 1895 by uh, that fine-looking gentleman right there, D.D. Palmer. Uh, he's got quite a beard. He was a magnetic healer back in the day. Um, the legend has it that the janitor in his building told him that he had turned his head about the seven years prior to that, he heard a pop, and hearing went down in his, in his ear. And so, legend has it, he looked at him, felt along his spine, he adjusted when the guy's hearing came back. Um, it actually happened then, somebody else came in, and, and the hearing came back to that person, so they thought they discovered the cure for deafness. Uh, but then as they started developing the, uh, the profession, you know, also, you know, lots of things you know, started clearing up or getting better. And the thing was, because the nervous systems of these people were starting to work better. You know, your, your hearing works because you got your auditory nerves, your cochlear nerves, and all those things. They get the signal, the sound, send it to the brain, the brain interprets it, and then you do whatever, you know. Somebody says, run fire, well, then all of a sudden your legs are going to start moving because you got that. But if that pathway is narrowed, you know, your hearing's not going to work as well, possibly. Uh, Hippocrates, he talked about get knowledge of the spine, for this is the requisite for many diseases. So even Hippocrates was looking towards the spine way back when, when he was doing his thing. Um, Dede's son, B.J. Palmer, he developed chiropractic up until 1961 when he passed away. Uh, he had a clinic where they would adjust people and they hooked them up to all sorts of tests as far as um, you know, measuring you know, blood pressure or whatever you could measure. Um, they would measure every little thing that they could. Chiropractic today, um, as far as the profession side of things, um, mean salary for chiropractors is about 100000 according to CNN. Um, Forbes named it one of America's most surprising six-figure jobs. Research conducted showed that it's one of the ten best jobs in America, so that works well. Um, we talk about it, if it was ever something you ever thought about it, you know, the nice thing about chiropractic is you get to go to work with a purpose. You know, so many people complain about Mondays. I like Mondays. Mondays are great because that's when I get to have my hands on people and you, they start to express their health a whole lot better. So that's a cool way to go to work. Um, helping others reach their potential when, you know, somebody's body's working better, well, every facet of their life is going to be better. And so they can be the best possible person that they can be, whether it's my wife, whether it's my kids, whether it's the accountant, whether it's a lawyer, whether it's a ditch digger, whatever it is, you want people to be the best that they can possibly be. Um, passion, and, you know, I get pretty fired up about it for being there during the week. Um, you know, there's, there's no blue days. Um, the philosophy and mission, you know, you know, I know why I go to work, and uh, that's my purpose. Entrepreneurship, I own my own business, being my own boss is nice. If you want to take a day, take a day. Uh, you get to set your rules. So you live by your own rules, and at that point, it's however hard you work, that's how successful you're going to be. And financial freedom. So, um, you know, you're, you make, you put in the work, you're going to make the money. It's that pretty, you know, pretty simple. Sherman College is where I went, which is up in Spartanburg. First location was downtown. The second location was a strip mall that doesn't exist anymore. Um, it opened in 1973. Um, it was named in, in honor of Dr. Lyle Sherman, and he was the head of the B.J. Palmer Research uh, Clinic out in Davenport, Iowa. And that's what Sherman is today. It's on an 88-acre campus. Um, it has its own health center, uh, which is nice. It's, it's real affordable chiropractic care. So there's about, I think at any given time, between three to 400 interns um, that have their own mini practices. So you have your own practice that's there, but you don't have to leave campus to do it. State-of-the-art equipment like digital x-rays. So you can pull up your x-rays anywhere on campus. You, you know,